Hi everyone, this is Jim. Welcome to this postmortem of my Blitz game number 980. My opponent started off with d4 and I went with uh, knight f6, hoping to get some kind of uh, Nimzo Indian. But uh, he played knight f3, so that's uh, gone, sadly. And uh, I just played d5 here. Um, White's setup is actually very flexible with the knight here and the pawn here, and there's a lot of different ways he can play. He can play with a um, Fianchetto on the king side, he can play with c4 and the traditional uh, Queen's, Indian, Queen's Gambit fashion, or you could play with Bishop f4 going for a London system, or uh, pawn to e3 going for a Kala system perhaps, or maybe e3 and c4. So a lot of different options for uh, white, and I don't have a particular plan that, that really meets all of them except to just uh, put a pawn in the center. So it's often the case if you don't know what line your opponent is going for, just, just play by the classical rules of uh, occupying the center, and you won't go wrong. Uh, let's see, he continued with knight c3 here, so that's uh, the first uh, kind of strange move. Um, but it, it's interesting, it sets up some uh, future tactics. Let's see, I decided to get my bishop outside the pawn chain. It looks like um, <clears throat> g6 is a popular move here. It's another way of keeping this diagonal open for this bishop, and uh, this bishop can fianchetto itself. Uh, but the chess engine thought bishop f5 was fine as well, so in spite of that, in spite of that question mark there, I think this is an okay move. And he went to bishop f4 here. So now his plan is, is becoming clear. He's got uh, the idea of focusing on the uh, c7 pawn. And uh, I put a stop to that by playing a6. Um, in the opening book and also the chess engine suggested that I didn't really need to worry so much about that. I could just play e6 here, which is a good developing move and what it's a move I want to play anyway, so I might as well play that here if this isn't a threat. If he goes knight b5, I play knight to uh, a6 to defend. And um, although it seems um, this knight is a bit awkwardly placed at the moment, um, I did get a, a developing move in, and later I'll be able to kick that knight away and maybe get my, get my knight back into the game via c7. So uh, white will have to waste another move retreating his knight at some point. So I guess this is, uh, even if this knight move is a waste, uh, white is wasting more time than black here. So this is this is good for black. Anyway, I went with uh, a6, just a simpler way of playing, but, but not as effective. It's just kind of a one purpose move, a single purpose move, uh, and he can't stop playing knight b5 anymore. We're just uh, out of the uh, opening book here. Uh, I'm still doing okay. So it's not like I've done anything horrible, but um, the game continues probably about even until uh, g4 here. Uh, g4, you know, white, white maybe even had an opening advantage up to this point, but g4 uh, is, is a little bit uh, questionable. Uh, it's not like white is worse after this. Maybe it's just equalizing uh, because he has ways he could play. Um, the follow-up here, I think knight h4 is where it starts to go downhill. He could have continued with bishop g2. And, uh, you know, then he's still got options of castling on either side. He has this idea of pushing this pawn forward at some point um, to harass my knight. Um, you know, it's an interesting position and probably playable, although I, I'd prefer to have black in this position anyway. But uh, knight h4, he's just wasting a little bit too much time early in the game, rounding up that bishop. So I go for rapid development here. I bring my bishop out with a threat. He decides to trade it off, and then he trades off the bishop. And so we can stop at this point. Um, it's, uh, yeah, I just took back. So it's white's turn to move. But I've got uh, actually three pieces developed, and white only has one piece developed. Um, if I decide castle kingside, I could castle in one move, and if I castle queenside, I can castle in two moves. Um, and he can castle queenside in two moves. So it's about equal from that point of view, but uh, but he's a little bit weaker on the king side with this pawn structure, and uh, he has to take some care about this uh, b-pawn, as we saw in the game. There is a, a pin actually going on here, so uh, his very first move here, though, was to play e3, and that uh, protects that uh, g-pawn, so he's uh, okay here, but uh, black is, is pretty clearly better at this point. Let's see. I developed a knight bd7. The chess engine says... Uh, just, just push on with c5, open things up while you have this edge in development, and your king is still pretty safe in the center. 
So uh, that's another way of playing and probably better. Knight bd7 may be a little bit slow. And, uh, and here, black could get a playable position with uh, g5, kicking my knight and also uh, freeing up his queen so it doesn't have to keep defending that pawn. And my knight doesn't have a lot of good squares. The chess engine was suggesting knight to h5, which looks a little bit weird to me because uh, the knight can't come forward to any of these squares and it can't come back, so it doesn't look like it has a lot. But I guess in the long run I'll be pushing forward with f6 and, and trying to liberate the knight that way. Um, anyway, seems to be slightly better for black still, but uh, that, was, uh, <clears throat> that was white's best play. So after queen d2, well, he's just losing a pawn, so I'm just uh, winning after this. Uh, he just left that pawn undefended, and I can exploit that pen. So, you know, any other move would have... Uh, well, most other moves <laughs> are okay here. Uh, Bishop g2 would be a nice move because it would solve this problem. Um, also, g5, as I mentioned, would solve the problem. Uh, Bishop g2, by defending the rook, would, would solve the problem. Anyway... Queen d2 was played, and I noticed and grabbed the pawn right away. Um, he castled queenside. I played knight to um, f6. I just retreated the knight here. And uh, yeah, I checked with the engine. I mean, <clears throat> I didn't have to retreat the knight because the pen is still on, but uh, the knight wasn't really doing a whole lot there. I was looking at uh, f2, perhaps, but um, the queen's got that defended. Um, so anyway, the chess engine approved of actually retreating the knight there, so I guess it was okay. He pushed on with uh, f4 at this point, and now I castle queenside. Uh, instead of castling queenside, actually, um, the chess engine likes playing b5 at this point. So I guess it is, it's really happy with my king in the center and uh, just wants to push on with the attack while I have this uh, edge in development and the uh, extra pawn. So anyway, I castle. He plays bishop e2. And uh, let's let's go through some moves here kind of quickly. It was a long game, um, and these are pretty normal moves. You know, actually after uh, after that blunder, my opponent seemed to slow down and play better. Should just uh, learn to play like that from the beginning, and will probably have better results. So no no huge mistakes by either side, and um, it's not so easy for me to uh, break through here. I did eventually get in that d4 push, which I'd been signing up for. Uh, but this moment here, knight e2, is a very uh, interesting moment. It's actually a mistake because it allows a tactic and he should play something like queen f3, which would just continue this kind of maneuvering. Um, and, uh, and I'm still winning here. I'm basically, through all this section, I'm, I'm uh, about two points up. So a pawn plus a better position, I guess. Um, but knight e2 is a mistake because it allowed a tactic, and I didn't spot the tactic. It's not easy to see, so... Um, if you want some time to think about it, why don't you uh, pause the video here and see if you can spot it. Black to move. Okay, I'm going to uh, give the answer away now. The answer is knight to a4. <laughs> so just giving up the exchange, right? I mean, this knight e2 move would threaten my rook. But, uh, well, it's, it's kind of cute. He takes here. I take back with the queen, and now the queen and the knight are focused on that uh, g2 pawn, threatening mate, so that has to be dealt with. There's actually no piece that can come over and defend that, so um, c3 is the best move, kick the queen back, and then, um, let's see, what's the tactic here? Yeah, yeah, you come back here, <laughs> threaten, <laughs> threaten this pawn again, the queen drops back here. And uh, and then you play knight here check and you pick pick up the pawn and you get the exchange back. <laughs> so uh, so even though you gave up at the exchange at the beginning, this actually uh, wins a pawn for you. So you're, you're two pawns up now and this king is a little more exposed with uh, one fewer pawn to protect itself with. So uh, kind of a neat tactic. I don't know if I would spot something like that even in a uh, slow game, although I was looking around. You know, when your piece comes under fire like this, you don't uh, want to retreat it. You want to look for a way to uh, maintain it there or to uh, move it to a better square. Um, <clears throat> and uh, so knight, knight, to, uh, a, <clears throat> knight to a4 was a, a neat way of actually maintaining the rook there. It, it, it even says that um, 
White's best move is not to take the, the rook, actually. Um, but uh, anyway, it's a cool tactic. I had to show that. So uh, I just retreated here. I didn't see all that. And um, he played knight to c3, kicking my knight again. So I dropped back. And um, then he went to queen to f3. So the move he could have played at the beginning. And, and we're back to a normal... Uh, the, the evaluation of the position hasn't really changed. Other than, uh, you know, there was that momentary tactic I could have played, but basically uh, black is still two pawns up. Let's see. I went um, knight, <clears throat> knight b to d5 here. Oh, yeah. He, he takes the knight off. I took back with the knight. So I'm just trading off that piece that's around his king. He goes uh, bishop e2. And then I went uh, queen to c7. Seems like this is a bit of a mistake. The... Uh, Let's cancel that. Chess engine likes to move knight to e3 here, allowing some trades. Uh, although uh, it, it likes keeping the rooks on, it likes just moving the rook over. Maybe, yeah, maybe doesn't have time to trade actually because I take with check. But uh, <clears throat> anyway, just defending and then knight coming to c4. And uh, well, he can trade. He can trade the knight for the bishop, and I guess this is just a, a kind of a simpler position uh, where I have that, um, I still have that pawn edge. Let's see, one, two, three, four against two. Yeah, I'm just one pawn up at this point. But uh, yeah, the chess engine is giving it black a plus two evaluation. Anyway, I drop my queen back here. I'm kind of shuffling around a little bit, not quite sure what to do, but uh, I made a threat with that move. I was attacking the pawn, and he didn't bother to defend it, but he could have just played rick h to f1, and it would have been, um, you know, he would have continued on at the same level. But he um, played h4 here. Let me take the pawn. And uh, so, I'm, so now I am two pawns up, and he dropped his queen back to g2. So avoiding the queen trade is, is right. He should keep the pieces on and just try and uh, <clears throat> wait for me to make a mistake, try and keep things going. Keep the game going any way possible. Let's see, I played a 93 here, which looks like a fork, but it doesn't really, uh, it's not really a fork because after he takes, I have to take back and then he can move his queen. Yeah, if I don't take back there, if I take the queen instead, then he can take this rook with check. So basically he's getting uh, two rooks for the queen and that's, that's okay for black as well. So probably better for me to take this way. He went queen h3. And then, um, yeah, he didn't play queen h2. <clears throat> queen h3, and then uh, there's a tactic here. So it's uh, black's turn to move. This one's a little simpler than the last one. See if you can spot the tactic here. Okay, pause the video if you want time to think about it. I'm giving the answer away now. Um, it's, it's maybe a little hard to see, but you can take here. Because after the king takes... And you come in here with the queen check and you pick up the bishop. <laughs> so uh, there's no no defense against that. So that's basically a free pawn there. So I missed that one. That one I think maybe I would have figured out in the game. I think it's a little bit hard to see because the knight at this point is uh, blocking the queen's view of that square. But uh, after you sacrifice the knight, the queen and the rook are coordinating on the d2 square. So the tactic uh, pops out at you once you see uh, in your mind knight takes and king takes. <laughs> so anyway, kind of a cool idea, which I didn't see during the game. And uh, so I played queen to um, e4 here. And uh, there is a little more wandering here. It's it's a little bit uh, tricky to get some uh, significant edge when you miss these uh, tactical opportunities. So uh, he did trade pawns here, which is probably not a great idea. Um, you know, I, I was threatening the uh, f2 pawn or the c2 pawn, and he just took on a6, so I took on c2, and then he went to king a1. So right here, this this move, this next move is is a mistake. Um, you know, I think I played okay, maybe some inaccuracies, but this, this move is a blunder probably. Uh, I should play knight d5 rather than knight d3. I mean, what's wrong with knight d3 is that his bishop can just trade it off, and that actually makes things a little easier for, uh, for white to defend. So knight d5, uh, let's, let's follow this a little bit. The chess engine came up with a clever idea here. 
uh, bishop e2, knight to c3. <laughs> and if he takes the knight, you take back with check, king a2, go here, check, king a1, and then you bring the rook in, and it's actually a forced mate. So uh, there are other ways that white could play, but that's the basic idea. You can, you can sacrifice that knight on c3, and if he takes it, uh, he gets mated. So that's, that's kind of cool. Uh, anyway, I, I played knight d3. I, I was thinking of going for the mate here, but of course he could just take it. He didn't take right away. I played rook b1 first, but I continued to ignore this idea. I played king a7, and now he does take it. And now this is actually um, not so simple here. Let's go forward a bunch of moves. I mean, I'm keeping this plus two edge according to the chess engine all the way through this part. But uh, as we get towards the end here, it's actually uh, getting a little bit tricky. My king is a bit exposed now because he grabbed that pawn. You know, he's got the queen coming in here with check. Right here, uh, the chess engine says the best play is uh, to push on with the e-pawn. Let him check down here and then uh, let him check up here and then block with the queen. And this is actually a nicer way of blocking than the way I did it. The uh, queen is covering these squares. He doesn't want to trade because I will win the rook and pawn endgame with these passed pawns. And, uh, and, but if he doesn't trade, uh, I've managed to get this pawn forward and my queen is in a position to uh, support that pawn going on to the next step. So that is uh, the best way to play here. I played queen a7, played queen c5 check, I played uh, b6. And he ran out of time here, but I, <clears throat> I looked at this and um, he should continue with the uh, queen to c8. Just get that queen into my camp here and try to make things awkward for me and uh, later maybe bring the rook in and threaten to come over here. Uh, so it's a bit tricky and the only move here that keeps a big winning advantage to black is queen to f7. I don't know if I would have found that move and other moves uh, give white enough play that he can you know kind of chase me around and uh, and it's not at all clear. It's not like white uh, is winning in any of those lines but it's uh, he may be getting me into a perpetual check or something like that. So, so it was uh, fortunate for me in a way that he ran out of time. Of course, being low on time, both sides can make mistakes. So who knows what would have happened in the actual game. But uh, And I was still winning at this point. But after queen c8, I would have had to have found uh, queen f7 as the only move that's really, that's really winning. Uh, so fun game. Hope you guys enjoyed this. And I'll see you next time. Bye.